Well, good evening. Third week of our um, parent workshops. And today we're dealing with frustration free STEAM. I'm Dana, otherwise known as Mr. D. And Patrick is with us again as our moderator. And um, we're going to go right into our PowerPoint and look at what we're going to do today and talk a little bit about it. So let's see what we got here. All right, so first thing is I'm going to give the agenda and the agenda has uh, greetings and introductions, icebreakers, theme talk, hands on activities and a reflection. So first thing is, of course, to talk a little bit about our housekeeping. Uh, I've introduced myself and the moderator. Um, our housekeeping for Zoom is that there is a ability to mute and hopefully you know how to do that. We can chat when necessary if chatting is uh, is uh, something that you need to do and you can chat and then we can address it uh, when we have time. Sometimes I ask for chats as a response to questions I may ask. We're not gonna need the breakout rooms or the whiteboard today. Uh, and if you need a bathroom break, be sure to probably stop your video and take care of business and come on back with us. So that's our uh, basic information. Um, in the way of greetings, we're gonna have a icebreaker. And again, I like this one until I get uh, some satisfaction on it, I'm gonna keep doing it. And it is to go to the next sheet of our paper, our PowerPoint. Next sheet says, you are to chat in your box a betcha never. And a betcha never is after signing in while waiting for others to sign in, please post in your chat box one thing that is true about you that you believe no one else in this group can claim to be true about themselves. Instructions will follow. So I'm going to go to the chat now. And I'm going to chat uh, my name, which that's not necessary. But anyway, my name and my bet you never. Let's put that in parentheses. So after we've all entered our betcha never, we can look at what's in there and we'll start from the first one, which is me. And I'll tell you that I bet you never dunk basketballs. I have dunk basketballs regulation height basketballs. And that's my Bet you never. Now, if someone else has dunked basketballs, then I would have to go back in and find and think of another bet you never that no one else can claim until I come up with one that's unique. And if this is unique, then we go to the next person and we find out a little bit about each other. Well, we're going to move on a little bit further now after that uh, icebreaker. And we're going to go into our little talk. And our talk, uh, first of all, is about Arts and Scraps. And to let you know, Arts and Scraps is a, uh, what do you call it, brick and mortar? Yeah, we're a brick and mortar. We have a store, and we have a warehouse, and we have a garage, and we have a store on wheels. And we go where kids gather kids come to us, we have a classroom, and we essentially take things that are, are destined to be thrown away, considered waste, and we find clever, creative, fun things to do to help kids to have fun and to think. And if it's clean, cool, and safe, those are the things that we're after. Go to our website, artsandscraps.org, and you'll find out 
every single thing you need to know about arts and scraps and a whole bunch more that you never even knew you needed to know. Great place to go. So that's uh, an introduction to arts and scraps and that's what we're about. Now, in this one, and it's called Frustration Free Steam, I'm going to go through and talk very simplistically about steam and what it is. I, I just, this is the very basic uh, definition that's understandable that I've come up with that's workable. And so if we can go to that next uh, page. So you can see the STEAM acronym, the uh, S-T-E-A-M. So the S is for science. And science is learning. It is knowledge. It is what is knowable in the universe. All things are knowable. The O-L-O-G-Y, uh, uh, ology, O-L-O-G-Y, yeah, ology. All the ologies, everything that we know, that's what science is. Technologies are products. Generally, we're looking for a solution. We're trying to solve something. It may be a physical thing that we need to build. It may be a concept that needs to make something work. Technologies are products or solutions. Engineering is process. How do we get to what we need to have done? Um, and there is a engineering process, not unlike the science process. So that's all about the how-to. Art excites. The art in STEAM pretty much is that that elicits some kind of a feeling. So when I think about an automobile, for example, and I guess I'll apply the automobile to all of these in a minute. Uh, math quantifies. So it's a tool for us in uh, STEAM. Uh, the things that we believe and know are generally measurable, and so they can be quantified how much in units of uh, speed or units of mass or units of uh, volume. We are interested in, in numbers. So all those work together, and that body of information, when we are, when our minds are trained that way, First of all, it gets us really good paying jobs because that's where all the money is. But more than that, we have a, a very orderly mind for uh, being teachable in so many broad ways because this pretty much applies to life. So let's take the car as an example. So the science is a learning and a knowledge. So there's the gravity that has to be overcome and gravity is a natural force uh, when you're designing a car, you're looking at ways to make it move faster or move more aerodynamically. And so you have to take into account things like uh, gravity. You may have to take into account weather and all that. So that body of information has an impact. The technologies are the products in that. So we have, for example, computers now on our automobiles to make them more efficient. But well, that technology that was developed was developed to make these much lighter, more efficient automobiles work uh, without using a lot of energy. And so there's a computer on board computers and the computers that diagnose the uh, problems in the car, et cetera. Engineering is process, which is the how to. So there's people who got together and figured out, well, how are we going to get this thing together, this automobile? How are we going to get the assembly line? Where are we going to place the things that's going to be used? Robotics may have been used in the modern cars and they had to figure out where to place them and how to program them and uh, that whole process. Art excites, when you think about a car, a lot of times the thing that changes from year to year is just the color. It might be a little bit more technology, it may be a little bit more design, but we keep changing these things because people like things that make them feel good. And so a lot of what happens in the technological world also has a lot to do with you wanna feel good about it. And then the map that quantifies, there is so many, many ways that mathematics is used in the building of an automobile. We have 
the machinist to have to make parts that fit together within microns of, uh, of uh, clearance. And so they have to know how to measure, how to uh, count. There's a timing on how fast a particular piece apart can be assembled on a car in order to time it and coordinate it with other parts that have to put on spacing, um, the money that's involved, uh, the profit margin, all that stuff is part of uh, the money part. So when you have a good mind that can utilize these different skills, you're pretty much prepared to, to tackle the world. And the fun thing about this is that STEAM is applied to everything. I used to apply it as a high school teacher to relationships because a lot of the kids are involved in high school with relationships. And uh, they were surprised to know that they did a lot of uh, scientific discovery in the process of relationships. Because what we know, we know because of uh, repetition, for example. And uh, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but certainly there's an application. And for us, the application is when we're playing. When we're playing, we can also stimulate the mind of our children to exercise it in a way that they have fun, but they also develop skills that are going to be necessary for the rest of their life. And that's what we are excited about at Arts and Scraps. So, that's as basic as it gets. I lose a little bit in translation, but I think that's enough to uh, help you. And when you're thinking about the things that you do with your children in the way of fun and play, you can always think about how can I involve some math in this, this activity? Or how can I get them to involve art in it? Uh, how can I have the engineering process utilized in this play? What technologies can I talk about or introduce or uh, challenge my child to have a vision about? And then of course, there's all the information that you can learn from just about everything there is. How many things we've learned from science that we apply to technology and we go to Velcro, there's a copy of a, of a plant. Someone looked at the little cooker bugs as we call them and noticed that they had little hooks on them and they figured out a synthetic material that they could curly curl on and it made those little things and that person's a multi-billionaire now. So anyway, that's our frustration-free talk. Now, let's get into the fun part, which is what we're all about at Arts and Scraps. We love hands-on. So we'll look at our challenge next. Next screen tells us that we are going to be challenged to create a, mm -mm, I'm a little stuck on mine, it's not moving. Don't know what's happening. Ah. There we go. So our challenge is going to be to create a button vehicle, a button vehicle. And when I'm dealing with vehicles, I always ask the children to define a vehicle. What makes a vehicle a vehicle? And so depending on the age of the kid, it may take a little more time than others and we learn to have pregnant pauses when we ask for responses from children. Wait, wait a minute. 60 seconds seems like a long time, but if your child gets used to you waiting, they will understand that you're not gonna move on until they attempt to give you an answer. And so you ask them, what makes a vehicle a vehicle? And then you ask them, uh, if you have a variety of kids in your home and they're all around the same age, it's always nice to say to them, I acknowledge that you have an answer because they're saying, ooh, 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 ooh. And you say, hold on to that answer and let's give the other child a chance to think and the other child because we think at different rates. But we don't want to put spoilers out and have the quickest kid give the answer all the time. We want everyone to know that we're going to get around to you and we can do it by delaying the answer and hold them off with a, I see that you have the answer, but don't tell me, hold off. Let's wait a few minutes and see if Susan has an answer and George has an answer. And when everybody has an answer, then you can start talking. And then they're gonna tell you essentially that a vehicle is anything that transports something from one place to another. 
And that's pretty much it. It has to move something from one place to another. And then you can start talking about all the different things that are vehicles. And that well, we're going to have our vehicle be a button vehicle, meaning that it's going to roll this vehicle. Some vehicles fly, some are on tracks, some are on water. But this particular vehicle is going to be on wheels. And the first uh, challenge is to create a free rolling four wheel vehicle utilizing four buttons for wheels. You're going to utilize straws for axes and axi attachments. Now, if I've got an older kid out there in this family that's looking at this, that's all I would give them. And then I would toss in uh, some materials. For me, it was needles, thread. Um, I had some wire. I had my straws. I had a collection of buttons. Uh, I had some rubber bands. Those were the things I started with. And my first attempts were not very successful. So I ended up with string. And that's what I'm going to recommend you use is string. I took some string that was tri ply string, wound on a, uh, wound around, and I unraveled it. And then I got my buttons and I got my little rubber bands, the uh, rubber bands, and that's where I had success. And I'll show you my technique. Now this is for the younger kids. The younger kids, you're gonna demonstrate and help them through this. Older kids, give them the stuff, tell them to figure it out. And they'll figure it out. There's probably a variety of ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you my way. So we'll go to the next, uh, I think we can go off screen now. Well, let's go to the next screen and look at the material sets required. So that arts and scraps bag is important in this one because you're gonna need these stickies. That'll make it very easy for you for what I have in mind. If you don't have these stickies, it's okay. You can use cardboard or uh, paper or tag board, anything that's stiff and that can be cut. Drinking straws, and you have to have uh, drinking straws that have two uh, different diameters because one straw needs to fit inside and, and freely move inside the other. Doesn't matter what size they are, it's just as long as that one is bigger and one is smaller. Scissors, I said kite string. I think kite string comes probably thin enough where you wouldn't have to do what I'm doing, but this is what I had. And I took this stuff here and I just unraveled it. I cut a section off first and then I unraveled it. And then that gave me my single strands and that's what I used. And then I have these brand name rainbow loom bands and rainbow is not the only people that make these band rubber bands, but any little uh, rubber bands will do, including the bands that they use in beauty shops. I think there's little black bands. I have two daughters, and I remember little black bands that the, they got from the beauty supply places. But these are nice and colorful ones, and that's cool. And then cellophane tape is necessary if you don't have our stickies that we use with arts and scraps. So that'll be necessary. Uh, but it's optional if you do. So let's go on and get the screen now and we'll sort of model how we're going to get these axi built. So we'll make the uh, our tabletop large and then I'll start the process and we'll walk and talk through it. If there's questions, please feel free to uh, put a hand up or you can unmute and say, what are you doing? So here's a, a piece of this. I just happened to have collected this string, saw it somewhere, and I grabbed it because it looked like it would work. I'm going to cut about a, a foot of it. And then I'm going to actually unwind it because this is just wound around. 
into three strands. And if you have little twine or kite string, as I said, you want something that's got a little body to it. When I tried the thread, I had problems. I won't tell you what the problems are, and maybe the age of your kid will be such that you can give them thread and let them work their way through without getting frustrated. But this process I'm using, I used it with the thread, and I won't tell you what the problem is. It wasn't not holding together because the thread was fine for holding together. I also had a couple of ways. So here I have unraveled this one. That's one, and then there's another ply. I'm unraveling it. And I think this looks to me to be what the diameter of kite string would be. So I would guess that that's a pretty good gauge. There I have three of those pieces, that's good. So I've got that. Now I've got my rubber bands. And in my process, I need one rubber band per axis or per two. Now, I'm gonna take some buttons. I've got big buttons, I've got little buttons. And the thing about the buttons is that it has to be shankless buttons. There are buttons that have shanks on them and those of you who are sewers know what I mean. But if you don't, they have to have holes, either two holes or four holes. And that's typically what buttons have. And so I've got some really cool buttons here. I chose to have all my wheels the same size. So I had at least four of every style of button that I chose. And some, there were six. But you can, of course, depending on what your vehicle is going to be, and for little uh, youngsters, sometimes hot rods are all the rage. And so they might decide to have two large back wheels and two smaller front wheels. And that's, of course, fine to do. By the way, at Arts and Scraps, we get all sorts of things. And we have these nice commercially made wheels that we've used many, many, many times. And this is very easy. We still have the same principle with the axis of a straw within a straw but these wheels have an opening and you just stick the straw in and you've got it and the straw is on top of it and it rolls freely. I don't know if you can see that rolling. Yeah. And all you do is just attach it. In the case of a sticky, you stick it on a sticky and you got your, your, your car. Not unlike this, but in this case, we have buttons. And this is a sticky, unpeeled the sticky side. I left this part here covered because I didn't want my axis that's naked to get stuck to it. So I really only have on the ends a piece of straw and a piece of straw here, straw here and here. And I actually split the straw so that I could get them on uh, after I made them because I had made a mistake. But anyway, fun things. So. I'm going to choose to use these big brown ones, I think, today, because they're cool. I think I'm going to make one axis, and that'll be enough to get you started, and then you can go on. So I'm going to cut it off and get my wheels. Okay, come on, come on. There we go. Now, another thing. If you don't happen to have buttons lying around and you don't sew for a living or sew as a hobby, you can always go to resale shops. They generally will have bags of buttons for sale, very inexpensively. We have them at Arts and Scraps. Um, or you can just take old clothing that has been discarded, you're gonna discard and take those buttons off. You don't want the shank buttons from coats but any of your buttons, including those on shirts, et cetera, can work. If you look at this little paper vehicle, these are pretty small buttons here. I don't know if you can tell, but that's not a huge button. Um, your button just has to be larger than the diameter of your, uh, your biggest straw. That's all you need. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna take my string 
And what I do is I'm going to put one rubber band on my string. Through, this, through the rubber band. The string goes through the rubber band like so. And then I'm going to thread my ends of the string through the wrong side of the button, like so. Okay, there we are. And I'm gonna make sure one is kind of short because I don't like to waste things and I know I only need enough to tie it off with three knots. So I'm going to go about there. I have a long tail and a short tail. I'm going to turn it over to the right side and I'm going to knot it. And I'm knotting it, not pulling the rubber band tightly to the button. I want about, for my straw length, I really want about maybe an inch of give. You can see it's about an inch there. And then I'm going to tie, and you have to tie your second knot very loosely because if you pull it tight after the first straw, first knot, it's going to pull your rubber band all the way in. You don't want to do that. You just want to still have that about an inch. And then on the third knot, that's when you can really tighten down because the two knots will keep you from pulling your rubber band too close. Uh, no, it didn't. Well, that's good enough. And then I'm actually backing off and I'm going to tighten it from the other side. And then I can. Wow, this is interesting. Unless this is my second tie, I'm going to go on with a fourth tie then because it didn't stop slipping and I want it to stop slipping. That didn't stop slipping either. So I better put a real nice pull up on this. Okay. All right. Mm. This is so interesting. I've got a situation where it does not want to tighten up. I'm going to put a spacer in and I'm going to pull there. So I put a spacer in to solve my problem. And then I tightened it. And now I'm going to cut off the the legs. And so I end up with a rubber band attached to one button. And that's what it looks like there. Very good. Now, I'm going to take that remaining piece of string First off, I probably need to decide the width of my axis. Now, if I'm going to make a car and I'm not going to restructure this piece of sticky, I've got to have my axle attachment so that it's over the edge of the sticky. So in this case, I've got about a quarter of an inch over on this side and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch over this side because I don't want that wheel to touch the body of this sticky. And I'm going to try my best to keep it as squared up as I can because I want it not to affect how straight my car goes. So I've got that and you can see it's just a little bit longer on both sides. Then my middle axle, the one that's actually, this is the axle holder. My actual axle then has to be even longer. And that's to keep the wheel from rubbing up against it um, all the time. 
I want as friction free as possible. Okay, and again, I'm trying to keep it as square as possible. And so here's my axle, the smallest straw, and you can see it's slightly uh, longer than the axle attacher, and that's slightly wider than the material I'm going to be attaching it to. Having done that, I'm going to take my axle and I'm going to run my string through the rubber band that I've already got attached to one button. You can see that. Pretty cool. There we are. And this rubber band is for tension so that I can have the wheels kind of snug against the axis. I then take both ends that are loose and I run them through my axis. Now this is, has been uh, twisted so it's got a nice waviness to it. But even at that, I'm able to just push it through. Slowly push it through. It would be a, probably a lot easier if I did not have um, string that had been twisted upon itself. But I use what I have and I'm patient and it'll work. And there it comes in. And if you get one in, grabbing that will probably pull the other one through. Great. And so you see I have it through and I'm going to pull it on through the rubber band in and snug it up a little bit. Okay. Next thing I have to do is make sure I put my attachment on. So I'm gonna, since that's too much bigger, I'm just gonna not worry about threading it. I'll just take the whole billy wax and push it through. And it'll probably be enough to grab it on the other end and pull it through. There, we have it. And all that remains is me to take another button, same size button, same kind. And again, to thread the loose ends through the eyes. Now, since I only have two eyes and it's pretty simple, one goes through one eye and I'm going through the back side of the button again, the wrong side of the button, because I want the, for me in this particular car, I want the kind of decorative side out. Depending on what I was designing, I might want the smooth side out. Okay, and now I have it assembled and all I need to do is snug it up. So here we have it assembled. I'm gonna stand it on one end and I'm gonna tie and I'm gonna pull until it's a little snug. And actually I can see through, I don't think you can, I can kind of see where the rubber band is and I can hold my tie and kind of pull it to see if it's snug enough for me and it is, that's pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to do another tie. And the second tie, I'm not going to pull it real tight because again, I don't want to snug it up more than it is. And hopefully this third tie will catch and just tighten it. And it did. And then I'm going to cut my wings off. There you have it. And I've got it so that it's, it's free on this axis. So it's a lot of give, it's not tight to the ends and it can roll nicely. And there you have it. And you do the same for the other end and you've got your four wheels. With this technique, because of the width of the string, I don't have to worry about it being um wobbly not very wobbly and there's some science to that that i discovered when i was working on this but i'm not going to tell you all about that i'm just going to let you figure it out 
Now, now having done that, the last thing is the attachment. So in this case, it's very simple. And I want to tell you that these cars that we are or vehicles that we're creating today, we're going to use them uh, Thursday in our session when we talk about the scientific method. I believe that's what we're going to be dealing with. So we're going to use these for one of the activities and then we'll have another activity also. But these are definitely going to be necessary. So you want to get a few of these completed and make sure that they're free rolling. And then we're going to talk about how we can have fun and also do a little science with these vehicles. Now, I've, I've opened up my sticky side up and because the entire axis is covered, I don't have to worry about leaving part of the sticky covered that's going to touch it. I can touch any of this that I'm calling an axis hanger because it's not going to touch the axis. And it's wide enough so I have to worry. And I find the easiest thing to get it so that it steers straight is to put it on parallel to the edge. And I don't know if that's real visible. Probably need something more contrasting to show that. And I don't happen to have anything right off hand that's dark. Or do I? Yeah, here's a roll frame. There, there we go. So you can see that my axis is pretty much parallel with the front of my car. Now, if I was going to shape this, I would still be careful to keep it parallel with the front because that's going to have a lot to do with steering. And the wonderful thing about these kinds of cars. Now, I'm not centered as much as I'd like to be. It looks like I'm over. When I go to the end on this one and this side here, it's not quite the same distance. It really won't matter in, in rolling these cars. But, okay, what can I say? Enough of that. So that's the front end. And then the same thing for the back end. And you have essentially made a car. Now, the engineering is figuring out how to attach these uh, buttons to the axis. That's a bit of an engineering process. Um, and there's an art component in how you decorate it. The wonderful thing about this kind of an automobile, again, is that when you uncover the sticky, you've got all kinds of surface to embellish this. And it might just mean putting on something that is colorful that would just stick on it. It could be putting some structure to it by folding up cardboard and making more of a body. Uh, I've had all kinds of wonderful things. I've had cars made out of uh, playing cards where I just took a playing card and I stuck it to that and uh, rolled it. Um, just all sorts of things you can do. And, I'm, and, I, and I will just leave that go. Part of uh, some of the competitions I do is I asked uh, the children to have the challenge completed, but also there's a component for attractiveness. It's very subjective, but we let the kids vote on what they think is the most original, most attractive, etc. And it's a lot of fun. This is one of those crafts that keeps on giving because they never get tired of making. Now, of course, you can go get your go-kart, your um, Hot Wheels and that, but these cars are cars that they have created. So they take ownership and they've decorated them and they've perfected them and they have handle them. So it's a lot more fun than, than using Hot Wheels. And Hot Wheels are great if you just need to, to have a wheel in order to do some science experiment. But this is a lot of fun. So that's really all you need uh, for most of the age groups that we deal with for building a car is how to get the wheels assembled. And then um, they decide on how they're going to do it. 
Further extension, a little bit more challenging, is to instead of making a four uh, wheeled vehicle, is to make a three wheeled vehicle. And that takes a little bit of thought, but it's doable. I've done it before where it's free rolling and it doesn't get hung up, et cetera. But those are the kinds of things that are great for challenging. And then once these things are made, a little hint is we're gonna be handling things on a ramp. So we're gonna use gravity as our force to move it from one level to another. And then we'll talk about the kinds of experiments that can be done in the name of fun. And so if you've got your car already built, you've got that part done and we can talk about the fun part and then we'll have another hands-on to drive home uh, that whole idea of science and, and playing. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this. And again, I want to emphasize that if you're going to have older children trying this, then just give them the supplies and give them the challenge. I want a wheel, a wheeled car, a button wheeled vehicle, I should say, with four wheels and it has to roll freely. A little touch and it should roll. And that's what you want them to build. And you give them the stuff and let them figure out how they're going to use string or thread or wire or whatever they have to attach it and, and that it rolls free. The younger kids, I would be, um, I would not want to frustrate them. And so I would tell them that we're going to make sure we have a uh, axle within an axle as a concept for them. And then I would show them at least this attachment uh, possibility. And this is not the only way to do it. I was thinking of, uh, for example, using bobby pins and just sticking the bobby pin into the end of the button and then putting that in your axle and letting the tension of the bobby pin uh, hold it in. I don't know that that won't work. I have not tried it because I didn't have any uh, ready accessible bobby pins. But I have wire, that's another thing I could have used. Uh, but this seemed to work for me. And with the young kids, you wanna have developed some way of doing it so that they don't get frustrated. And then their fun is in decorating. Give them a sticky surface and let them figure out how they want to decorate their, their uh, button vehicle. And the more button vehicles they make, the better because then it's a challenge time. We're gonna be racing, or we're gonna be seeing how precise they are, or if they can steer, or whatever else we come up with for next week, or next uh, opportunity. So that's pretty much it. Um, the only thing that's left is, and let me see if there's anything in our chat that needs to be addressed. Hmm. Okay, that Dana dunks basketballs. Okay, we got that one down. All right, nothing else there. All right, so we don't have to address that. And if I'm not speaking loud enough, you know, stop me with a hand up and say louder, or, or you're certainly very loud, or whatever else that you think will help things out. And then we have a more formal uh, reflection both to help us think about uh, what we're doing and also to inform uh, me about how I can do better. So reflection for this is in your text box, please, I want you to respond to at least, and at least means you can respond to all three, but certainly I don't want you to leave without responding to one of them. Whichever one resonates with you, if you're only gonna answer one, please, uh, answer that one. Of the following three points regarding the session, so I've made a sentence and left a blank, and you can put word or words in there to fill it out. Uh, and then when you put it in the chat box, what I'd like you to do is to save uh, your chat. So before you close out, there's a, a, a link, there's a, a ability to save a chat. I think once you pull a chat up, it's uh, in the three dots at the bottom. 
and it says save chat and you can save the chat and that way you can see what others have said and also there may be other things of suggestions on how we can improve this whatever has been loaded in here as we were doing this process you've got access to it and that way we can share information so having said that you're going to respond to those three and leave that and i'll uh, do the same and then we can um, both benefit from this hope you've had fun i've had fun this is one of my favorite activities i've done so many different things with it there's so many things you can do and as i said once you get the hang of it it's a, a play activity that keeps on giving it's both addictive and it is rewarding and you can learn a lot so until thursday enjoy your wednesday and we'll see you on thursday evening uh, thank you so much bye